Hello, guys. Today, I am going to demonstrate you a surgical procedure which is called radial shortening osteotomy, and this is a commonly uh, performed surgery for Kienbock's disease. Uh, so, today uh, we have got a lady. She has been complaining of pain and symptoms, which has been undiagnosed for last six uh, months. And uh, I have investigated her and I have identified her to have a Kienbock's disease, which is in early stage. And radial shortening osteotomy gives a reproducible result uh, in these patients even in long term. So today my goal is to take you in a step by step fashion as how to do this procedure in a safe and effective manner. Our patient today is a 28 year old lady who has presented to us with pain in left wrist for almost a year. She has seen two or three orthopedic surgeons who have done plain x-rays and um, they have not reached to any uh, diagnosis. So she has traveled all the way from uh, Madhya Pradesh to us in Jaipur. And if you see the x-ray, you know, the x-ray looks pretty good to me, nothing uh, remarkable. Uh, but if you see the lunate, there are some cystic changes in it. So I'm not sure whether it's normal or not. So that gave me some suspe uh, you know, suspicion about whenever you're seeing a young patient and you have got scaphal lunate tenderness when you're examining them, think of Kinebox disease. Uh, if in terms of ulnar neutral variance, the, uh, the variance is maybe a touch negative or may be neutral. So this was her x-ray of AP and even lateral um, was not um, just a second exciting. So it was looking pretty okay to me uh, looking at the lateral as well. But I was uh, concerned that this might be a uh, kind box disease hence I requested an MRI for her. So these are her MRI images. If you can see here, this is scaphoid looks pretty good. If let me just zoom it a little bit more, the scaphoid looks pretty good. The lunate is absolutely, you know, it's it's not uh, that signals are um, not of normal bones. So if you see, scaphoid is good. Lunate is turned black. So trichoderm is okay. So this is a classical presentation that you will see uh, in patients with Kienbock's disease. So if you have any young patients who is presenting with wrist pain. And she has got tenderness over the scaphulinate area. Uh, even if the x-rays are normal, um, get an MRI scan and that will help you in diagnosing her. So today uh, we have diagnosed her. So I am uh, planning to do a radial shortening osteotomy for her um, in order to uh, potentially elevate her symptom and make her symptom free. So this is our theta test setup when I am doing a radial shortening osteotomy. The position is pretty much same as when you do a, a distal radius volar plating. I have angled the table. It just makes um, the theta look more bigger. You get more space, especially if you have sm smaller theaters. So I have inflated the tunique and uh, my trolley, because I am left handed, I am going to sit here. So I have kept my Siam screen there. It's just right behind Hitesh. So it's going to come from here. The CM screen, if I need some images, when I'm, I'm sitting here, my screen will be there. Uh, if you are right-handed and if you want to sit on the other side, then you need to accommodate your CM accordingly. So this will be my theater setup. My trolley is just here because I can get my equipments there. So next, I'm going, you, I'm going to show you the skin marking for this procedure. So I'm going to use my modified Henry approach. So I'm just feeling the FCR and FCR is just there. So I can feel the FCR. So she's a female and females are usually very cosmetically aware. So I'll try to do it with a small incision. This is directly over the FCR. Now this will be my skin incision. I have already uploaded a video of how to do a distal radius plating. And uh, you can, if you want to see the approach and then I will, uh, uh, upload the link in the end of the video so that you can watch that video but for the timing I have just this is the picture of the video um, if you want to see the approach you can see that now once I have done my approach I have reflected the pronator quadratus I will join you at that stage so now we have done our uh, Henry's approach we have gone through the skin fascia we have taken the FPL away and this is uh, the plate that we have this is the shortest plate that we have because we are making using an Indian custom made uh, uh, 2.7 locking distal radius plate. Hence, I had to make slightly uh, longer incision. But if you have a smaller plate, you can get away with smaller plate as well. So this is uh, pronatus reflected. This is everything that I can see. Radial artery is on the other side. Median nerve is on this side. We have put two homans. Now the next step will be to put this 
onto the bone like this and then check it in C arm for its position and once we are happy with the position we will just um, reinforce it with few uh, guide wires to hold it position and then we will drill one or two holes and once we are happy then we will identify our osteotomy site. So if let me get my height of the plate correct and then I will talk about the osteotomy. Now we have put the plate and uh, I have put some wires to decide the height that what will be the best plate position. So I have just taken some images and I will show you how it looks. So if you see the x-rays both AP and lateral the height of the plate looks reasonably good. Now once I am happy with this position now I am going to decide my site of osteotomy. Now you will uh, read about osteotomy where to do it how much to do it. Now there will be surgeons who will be doing roughly uh, 6 to 7 centimeters which will be roughly in the shaft and they will be using different kind of plates. They will use a simple um, 3.5 locking uh, compression plates and there are dedicated plates which come specially for this uh, procedure. So they will do osteotomy here. I usually prefer osteotomy at cortical cancel junction in this area because I feel it heals faster and you don't need to expose that much so your incision is smaller. Now you also get plates which are dedicated for radial shortening osteotomy in which you have got a pre-built jig and you cut it and then you put the plate and then you are done with. Now the whole idea of where to do osteotomy is um, I you should do osteotomy in an area because you want to put three screws so one two three screws need to be put. So my osteotomy will be somewhere across this so that it's not it does not affect the screws. So it should be between uh, it should not cover the screws. So your plate will decide where your osteotomy is especially if you are doing a distal osteotomy. So my osteotomy will be somewhere across this area and that is where I will do my osteotomy so that I can still put my uh, three screws. Now usually kind box is associated with uh, negative ulnar variance. So when you are doing an osteotomy in an ulnar negative patient you want to bring to somewhere around neutral. So that will decide how much you are going to take. This patient is almost alert, uh, the variance is neutral. So I plan to take around 2 maximum 3 mm. So you don't, you, how much you are going to take depends upon the <coughs> variance of the um, patient. So if it is ulnar negative then you need to bring it to somewhere around ulnar neutral. In ulnar neutral patient you can take around 2 mm. I think 2 to 3 mm will be more than enough. So this is um, how I decide how much I am going to take it. So I am just going to mark my osteotomy. My osteotomy is just somewhere across that area. So just I am using a cautery just there and on this side or you can use a marking pen but I know that this is roughly few centimeters from this screw. So I know roughly where it is. So this is my site of osteotomy. So if you see this, this is the site of the osteotomy that we had marked. Uh, Saranshi if you can just take this. For some reason uh, the blood pressure of this patient is quite high and hence it is oozing a bit and normally it does not happen like that. So I am just using a mini saw. So for doing this procedure you must have a mini saw. You cannot do this uh, with a normal saw because that will that you cannot control that saw too well. So this is the cortex gone on on the back. You just need to go in and out, in and out, in and out till you feel that you have taken it out. So use a mini saw, take a 2M sliver and then that will do your shortening. So now I am just going slightly distal and I'm just trying to take away this sliver of bone here. You can see that this is my proximal cut and this is my distal cut. So I still feel the bone I'm just going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. You don't want to be damaging the extensor tendon. So just be very very gentle and I'm controlling my depth with my this hand so that it's not going deep. So let me just complete this and then I will join you. So what you can do is just to help you open it up you can just you know dorsiflex the wrist and this will open up uh, the space for you. So if uh, Hitesh can open it. 
and again I'm just going to carry on that's it I'm almost there I'm almost there So here this is going through and through, here it's gone through and through, this is a McDonald's, it's a beautiful instrument, here I think it's gone through and through, here also it's gone through and through, so I should be able to deliver this sliver of bone out, so I'm just going to distract it and use something like a cocker to get this fragment out. So this is coming out in fragments, ideally it should come out as one. So I'm just going to take away all these fragments and then once your osteotomy is complete and you have taken all the fragments from the osteotomy site, you can reapply the plate. So let me just do that. So there has been some issue with our recording, so I'm doing this uh, voiceover for this section. So uh, I'm just taking few mm from the dorsal side because uh, uh, we did not take much so that the gap is even and we can close the osteotomy site uh, in a better way. So ensure that and you always need to use a mini saw, don't uh, try to use. So this is once uh, our osteotomy is complete, you can see that we have done it through and through. So you can see that the radial inclination has gone slightly flattened and the radius is looking um, shorter than before. So once you have uh, done your osteotomy, it's just a matter of uh, putting uh, the plate. Now uh, some papers will describe that you pre-drill the holes before so that it's easier to apply the plates. However, I find it cumbersome because then when you're trying to compress it becomes quite difficult. So I just do the osteotomy and then uh, usually I take the plate and then apply the plate uh, later. So I've just put the plate on the top. I have drilled few screws distally. It doesn't really matter, you can put distally approximately, so I'm just putting some distal screws so that I have got some good grip and then I will put the proximal screws, uh, uh, pulling the plate uh, so as to compress and close the osteotomy site uh, and simultaneously I'm going to tighten it so that the osteotomy site can be closed and the radius height becomes uh, less. So this is uh, uh, how I do it, I don't pre-drill the holes and I think this is much more easier. So I'm just giving the tightening, uh, I'm compressing and my assistant is pulling the plate uh, proximally so as to compress and have an even compression at the fracture or the osteotomy site. Now this is uh, the plate applied and I have uh, tightened it up, it looks uh, shortened, the ulna um, is uh, just about uh, neutral so we have just taken 2 mm and I will try to um, compress it, I will just to give it a pull a little bit more and I will see if I can compress it a little bit more. But this looks pretty good. We have taken 2 mm, 2 to 3 mm and then we have uh, compressed it. So I find this is much easier than pre drilling So I'm just giving some final tightening to ensure that the screws are tight and it doesn't get loose. Um, uh, and then once you're happy with the position and once you know that you have closed it, uh, the osteotomy site well, um, you just need to put a few more screws distally as well as proximally. So this is my uh, 2.7 mm uh, locking screw going distally. And just I'm happy and just giving the final tightening. So once you are happy, um, you can... Uh, um, put the screws and the closure is a routine. I am not going to show the closure. If you want to see the closure, you can see my video on uh, uh, distal radius. So this is how you do a radial shortening osteotomy. So viewers, this was a demonstration on how to perform a radial oste uh, shortening osteotomy and I think uh, it's easier if you do it in cortico cancellous area uh, because the healing is uh, pretty good and it's better to do a free hand rather than uh, pre-drilling uh, the drill holes in the radius uh, plate as described uh, by many in literature because then when you try to collapse it, it becomes very uh, difficult. Once uh, you have oriented your plate and you have done a freehand shortening, I think it's much easier that you just uh, use manual pressure to collapse 
uh, if you need it to use a K wire, hold it and then put the plate on top uh, like in the today's patient. So I hope you find this video useful. Um, after uh, one thing I forgot is after uh, doing the surgery, there is no harm in immobilizing the wrist for a period uh, for around three to four weeks. I don't think it will do any harm and some surgeons will do it. I usually try to get them going from day one. That is my personal preference. But if you want to give a slab or a plaster for a short duration, I don't think it will be counterproductive. So I hope you find this video useful. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.